Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will be learning about managed identities. Managed identity will help you to secure your Azure resources and their environment. Managed identity helps you to secure your environment by avoiding you to store your credentials within a code. For example, if you're a developer or maybe in a plain text or maybe whether if you are storing your code on a computer or maybe on your repository, if you're trying to store, it will avoid all these possible ways you to you know, store the code. So instead, what happens is it uses as your AD authentication mechanism to explicitly give you the access for that life cycle of the resource so that's what we're gonna um, learn within this managed identity so all these days we used to store credentials within the code or maybe somewhere like in a plain text or a computer or in a repository it has an issues um, so far because when you want to access different as you base service uh, you will always have to authenticate in some way and prove it that access with the supplying the user credentials or the system credentials within that code for example if you take it and a web application that's accessing a storage account or maybe a storage then somewhere in some way we are going to storing this authentication information in that so that you can access the storage account and uh, this is where managed identity comes to rescue yourself and managed identities uh, what we can actually do is essentially associate the identity with, uh, within the given as your resources that serves your authentication against your as your active directory so here the key point would be the azure authentication authenticates with the azure active directory so it applies for uh, managed identity will apply almost for everything which uses azure active directory so that's where um, this service comes into as a specialization now let's understand uh, in the ba basics and complete overview of managed identities in the past we used to call microsoft service identity that's a formal name of managed identities and uh, now it's uh, fully called as managed identities and the common challenges as we talked about you have to uh, we you used to store the authentication uh, specific credentials somewhere but with the managed identities it doesn't need it and it's a feature of azure ad as we talked so you no need to pay any ad additional cost to use this managed identity as a service and now let's talk about the terminology so coming back to the terminology the first one would be the client id so a client id is a identifier generated by azure ad it's a unique identifier and this will tie it up with your application and your service principle during its uh, provisioning status and coming back to the principal id a principal id is the object of the service principle object for your managed identity that is used to grant role based access on your as your resources so what you do is normally you uh, you will be enabling the managed identities then it generates the client ID as well as the that will be associated this client ID with the service principle that will be uh, basically tied up and the principal IDs uh, where we will be applying the role based access and there is another additional service which runs on a IP address which is a non routable IP address well known uh, IP address that's called 169.254.169.254 and this a specific service will run that's called Azure Azure instance metadata service or imds so this works with the rest endpoint accessible for all the infrastructure as a service vms created uh, with your azure resource manager model and uh, so when you create an any of the a VM and you try to associate that VM with the managed identity then in the back end it's actually provisioned uh, something called imds which will be works on a 169.254.169.254 ip address within that vm 
So these are the three different terminologies that you need to avail. Now let's understand the two different managed identities that you have. One, you can assign this managed identity at the system level, that's a VM level. Other one would be the user level. So when you apply at the user level, uh, you need to uh, associate any of the user object. But when you associate it here with the system, that means um, you will be enabling on the properties of the system. Just to show you uh, where we can apply the system and users. So you, you see here, if I just go to the virtual machine properties and under identity, you have an option for managed identity for the system assigned and user assigned. So here you can assign any of the user specific um, objects and here you can assign for the system specific identity. This managed identities are service principles of a special type. So that means if you delete your uh, resources in the back end, it also deletes your service principles, uh, whatever it is associated. That's the important point uh, which we need to remember because why I was talking about this is here, if you can uh, remember here, we talked about um, terminology side and everywhere we are getting as a service principle because the client ID will be associated with the client ID again with the service principle similarly uh, principal ID is nothing but your service principle and all these two key terms or or key uses uh, will be associated with your service principles. That's where um, it's very important to understand if you're de deleting any of the managed identity, that means in the back end, it also deletes your service principles accordingly. So the life cycle is completely dependent. And let's understand more about the uh, password, how it's actually calling within the managed identities and how many days it's going to store. So as we talked, everything will be associated with the resource manager and it's your you enable, for example, for a virtual machine as the enable identity for the managed identity, then what would happen is it's actually goes and communicate with your Azure Active Directory tenant uh, under with a specific service principle. As we talked, when you create uh, or when you work with any of the Azure identity management, um, actually it's actually in the back and creates these service principles. That's where uh, it's going to talk. And then the third step would be the, it is actually updating. Since we created here the virtual machine, uh, if you remember uh, in the previous uh, slide, we talked about everything works. If you enable as a VM um, and you tie this managed identity for a VM, that means in the back end here, IMDS uh, will be used, which is Azure Instant Metadata Service with this specific IP that would actually cause the specific identity. And uh, when you go for the fourth step, that's a granting the identity access resources, um, which is the service area or the role-based access. So on top of it, it actually checks for the, whether do we have a permissions? If we have a permissions, it will request a token from endpoint uh, client um, client local endpoint and that token uh, goes uh, with the Azure AD and then it will be validated and comes back for the Azure um, service with your token. So that's where uh, it's going to be managed. Now let's jump into the managed identity specific properties, how this actually works uh, for a system assigned and a user assigns. So if it is a system assigned, it's gonna create a Azure resource, for example, a virtual machine or web app service uh, for a managed identity. Whereas if you're talking about the user, so it's going to be create a standard Azure resource. And the, coming back to the life cycle, the life cycle of the, uh, for the system managed, the shared lifecycle of the Azure resource, there's a managed identity is created within. And when the parent resource is deleted, automatically the managed identity will be also deleted. But here, managed identity lifecycle and must be explicitly deleted. You need to you know, go and delete explicitly if it is assigned for the user assigned. And coming back to the shared 
access as your resource um, it, it, you cannot uh, be shared because you're assigning for a virtual machine in this case that's a system and it can be only associated with a single as your resource and whereas with the Azure um, user assignment um, it it's the same uh, user assignment so wherever you go with the user identity that can be associated uh, that means you have the you can assign for more as your resources because we are targeting based on the user identity and common use cases if you look at uh, you can assign for a single as your resource um, whereas with the system assigned and workload for which needs to be independent identities for example it can be an application that runs on a single virtual machine that requires some credential access then um, that's the one of the use case for the system assigned whereas for the user workloads runs on a multiple resources we never know that you know user gonna access what resources so that's where we use the user assignment so uh, he can go and authenticate as we talked this identity is purely depends on azure identity authentication so if really needs to authenticate uh, based on um, any of the user authentication specific resources he can securely access that and get the permissions uh, again uh, it's purely depends on what you have given on the role based access management for example uh, if you take it workloads uh, multiple virtual machine needs to uh, uh, get access for the same resource let's say we talked about in the previous uh, slide uh, previous application like um, here this specific user wants to access for this VM similarly if he wants to access multiple VMs he can go ahead and grant the access when we assign he, that specific user can go and access multiple VMs that's the advantage of uh, having the user specific one and now let's have a look on um, how this works basically so coming back to the system assigned uh, managed identity uh, the first step would be the if you go back to the Azure resource manager it actually receives uh, where you enable the system assigned managed identity on a VM and then you create in the back end it actually creates a service principle within the Azure AD for identity of the VM service principle once it is created it will be trusted within your tenant by that uh, subscription and as your resource manager configures an identity by the VM updating the Azure instance metadata service identity endpoint within that service principle of the client ID with a certificate and after the VM is identity is has an identity when the VM itself it has an its identity the service principal information to grant the VM in the back end this is a workflow basically and it actually grants the Azure resources so you can call the Azure resource manager uh, for the role based access within that Azure AD assign appropriate role so the VM's uh, service principal for example you can call the key vault granting the access for a specific secret or a key vault so your code actually runs in the back end on your metadata instance metadata service point with this specific token and it's response uh, responsible uh, to authenticate with this MDS version and that uh, URL would be called in fact we would be demonstrating this entire thing so you no need to know well, but just you know understand the flow what happens and how this goes so uh, your code will uh, retrieve the authentication once you have the uh, once you executed this it actually you can uh, retrieve in the JSON format JSON web token JWT access token and it will return the code and the similar pa uh, similar uh, process almost uh, but it just uh, checks for the user specific identities uh, within the user assigned and coming back to the uh, where you can use this uh, in one word you can actually assign and manage your complete identities wherever your as your resources that can be authenticated with 
Azure AD authentication. That means if a resource is enabled for Azure AD authentication, you're happy to use managed identities. And let's take some of the examples, like you have a Windows VM, then you can enable all these Azure services, like Azure Data Lake, Resource Manager, SQL, Storage, and non-AD resources with Azure Key Vault, like Linux VM, and uh, specific uh, like as your container registries data lake resource manager like a storage all that and if you're talking about non vm specific then you can freely configure for app services app management and api management container instance and container registry task events functions kubernetes logic apps whatnot almost everything wherever you can authenticate with azure ead so that's a key here uh, to understand now let's jump into the demonstrate a demonstration of a, a specific demo on uh, authenticating from a vm uh, let's say i have a specific VM which I have created and I would be enabling the managed identity on that uh, specific VM and I will try to access my key vault to get that access token or the secret which which we have created in the backend so I'm gonna use this one of the uh, method to get the uh, key vault specific uh, values to conclude within this demo we talked about the managed identity which will avoid saving your code somewhere and this will be very useful uh, and it can be enabled for almost all the azure resources and uh, wherever it can authenticate with the azure active di directory and this is free of cost and there are three different terminology almost everywhere we are gonna actually see service principle in the back end which will associate either with the client ID as well as the principal ID and there is an engine that would actually run uh, if you are trying to use any of the system or user based authentication in the back end there would be a non routable IP that would be used and we would call to that code to get the authentication token uh, information and uh, there is a system a specific configuration can be done as well as the user specific configuration and as we talked if we delete any of the uh, managed identities that means the specific resource in the back in the managed identities life cycle also will be deleted um, as uh, correspondingly but uh, for a few of the user specific managed identities it doesn't go so we need to uh, specifically clean up I hope this entire lesson is useful for you. Thank you for watching this.